So I saw something online that since this is uh, the day we fall back, that means I get an extra hour to preach. <laughs> that response is not encouraging. But one of Jesus' longer sermons was the Sermon on the Mount. And it starts off really awesome, right? If you've ever read the Sermon on the Mount, you know it'll start off with blessed. That's the first word. Blessed are all these people, Jesus says. It starts with these beatitudes, the blessings. A whole list of ideas that challenge us to rethink our place in the world. A whole list of blessings that offer us this radical vision of how God sees the world and maybe, maybe invites us to understand how the kingdom of heaven is structured. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they who mourn. Blessed are the peacemakers. All of that wonderful stuff at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. You see, Jesus, I think, probably knew what he was doing. Start with the nice stuff and then get into the hard stuff. You see, the Sermon on the Mount takes a turn to something hard, to something difficult. It starts off by talking about how it's not the wealthy or the healthy or the powerful that are blessed, but that blessing is found amongst poverty and hardship. It starts off by telling us that joy is not found in possessions or things or security, but amongst the ideals of mercy and peacekeeping. These first words of the Sermon on the Mount are almost designed for anybody who has ever experienced hardship or struggle or loss. And I think that's pretty much all of us. They seem almost designed to make you feel good about yourself. And then it gets into the hard stuff. Because Jesus goes on from the Beatitudes to the rest of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus starts talking about how if you want that to be true, you need to live it in your life. You can't just hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. You've actually got to incorporate it into your life. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you've got this single priority to create the kind of world where the Beatitudes can be true for everyone. We have to create the kind of world where through our actions, blessing may be experienced. Live so that others may experience blessing. Live so that peace may be achieved. Live so that comfort can be found in mourning. Live so that mercy is real to you. Live so that these beatitudes aren't just words on a page. Let them become the way that you simply are in the world. And as Jesus continues on this sermon on the mount, Jesus reveals over and over again that in order to live these beatitudes, it's not about what anybody else is doing. It's about what's going on in the human heart. The revolution begins in our hearts, not in our condemnation of others. But that's a lot easier, isn't it? It's a lot easier to see where other people aren't living up to these high ideals. It's easier to look at others and say, oh, that person's not being very merciful today. Oh, that person's not being a peacemaker today. It's easier to look at our friends, our families, our politicians, our employers, our teachers, you name it, and say, hey, you could be doing better. But instead what Jesus says is, Look inwards. Look at what you're doing. He can't control what anybody else is doing. Look at what you're doing. Are you being merciful? Are you peacekeeping? Are you being a blessing to others? Part of the Sermon on the Mount that Lori shared with us a moment ago is something akin to Jesus' investment strategy where Jesus says, don't store up treasures here on earth. 
I don't know that Jesus would make a very good financial planner in the 21st century, but maybe his instructions tell us a little something about how we should be living. Jesus instructs us to invest in things that matter. And not just matter for a little while, Jesus instructs us to care for things that matter for eternity. That so many of the things that we invest our time in, money into, energy into, so many of those things do not last. Instead, Jesus offers us the opportunity to investigate what is of eternal value, to put our energy and, yes, even our money into those things. Jesus talks about this in terms of a treasure. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And maybe that's one of the things that we human beings get so messed up on so often. We start treasuring all the wrong things. We treasure wealth, even though most of us know that we are one diagnosis, one economic downturn, one once in a century flood, one tragedy away from losing everything. We treasure power. We think power will let us control our own destinies, even though it never seems to. So many of us treasure our intellect or our wisdom or our self-control, even though probably all of us have watched loved ones lose all those things to the horrors of dementia. These things that we treasure so much are so easily ripped away from us. So in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus invites us to rethink our treasure, to place our treasure in matters of the heart. And maybe we read it backwards. Maybe we've read Jesus' words backwards when he says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Maybe instead we should be reading that, where your heart is, there you will find your treasure. Maybe the invitation here is for us to first examine the matters of our hearts. Examine our value systems to spend time thinking over what it is we truly value. I wonder if we have gotten so far away from that kind of thinking that we have lost any real sense of what we should and should not be valuing. And maybe then when we figure out what our values are, maybe when we've done that work, Maybe then we have the conversation about how we invest our treasures in those values. When we find where our heart is, when we find where our values are, there too we will find our treasure. Our stewardship theme this year is around the joy that can be found in giving. I had the kids do this earlier. Anybody want to show me their joy face? All right, that's a couple joy faces. A couple of your joy faces look really miserable this morning. Our theme is that there is joy to be found in giving. That when we give of ourselves, we're not doing it for any reward with possessions. We do not give out of some fleeting feeling of superiority. We give because the act of giving itself is something that should bring us joy. And maybe that's where Jesus is inviting us to in this short passage from the Sermon on the Mount, to refocus our attention on those things that we value. And when we find that value, we find the joy that comes with it. We find the joy that comes when we give our time, when we give our energy, when we give our enthusiasm, and even when we give our money. We find joy if we are giving to things we value. 
So my invitation to all of you this season is to be thinking about your values, but also be thinking about what brings you joy. Because maybe that is one of the best ways we have to measure what we truly value. That when we find what we truly value, it simply brings us joy. Maybe joy is a gift from God to remind us what we value. So let joy inspire your generosity. Let joy inspire you as you engage in the mission of the church and allow yourself to experience joy and then let your treasure follow. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Lord, inspire us with joy this season. Even as we have so many things that we could complain about, be miserable about, be anxious about, remind us also that we have so many things to be joyful about. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.